U.S. lawmakers, determined to leave no stone unturned as they push for answers in the aftermath of two Boeing 737 MAX crashes in five months, have asked the U.S. Department of Transportation, that auditor to investigate pilot training, with emphasis on cockpit automation and international standards. The request, made via a March 29 letter from the House Transportation and Infrastructure, T. An aviation accident never has just one contributing factor, and while the U.S. remains the safest aviation system in the world we must always work to eliminate risks. T. While the investigations into the October 29, 2018, crash of Lion Air Flight JT-610 and the March 10 Ethiopian Airlines Flight ET-302 crash are ongoing, links between the two have emerged. In each case, flight crews apparently battled to keep the new 737 MAX 8 aloft while the aircraft's maneuvering characteristics augmentation system, MCAS, pushed the nose down by applying stabilizer trim. MCAS, added to the 737 speed trim system to help the new model handle like its 737NG predecessor, in certain scenarios, relies on data from one of the MAX's two angle of attack, AOA, veins. JT-610 investigators confirmed the aircraft was not getting reliable data from an AOA vane, which triggered repeated MCAS nose down inputs. Little data from the ET-302 probe has been released, but investigators who reviewed the flight data recorder data have said they see similarities between the two flight profiles. An interim report on ET-302 is expected within days. Boeing has developed a software upgrade that will prevent the updated system from activating based on erroneous data. It also gives pilots ultimate elevator authority by limiting the degree of automatic nose-down stabilizer. Pilots will also receive new training and updated flight manuals. These changes will be part of regulators' demands to lift 737 MAX revenue service operations bans that have grounded the 376 aircraft fleet. The MAX updates are a de facto admission that MCAS's design needed improvement. But many question how well flight crews were prepared to deal with the system's failure. Boeing did not include any MCAS information in 737 MAX flight manuals, which some point to as an egregious oversight. But many pilots believe Boeing's philosophy, that an MCAS failure would be recognized as uncommanded stabilizer input and managed via the common, stabilizer runaway, checklist, was reasonable. The checklist, which is the same on the 737NG and MAX and includes a step that cuts power to the stabilizer, is supposed to be common knowledge to an airline pilot. Pilots of large aircraft are trained from day one, when the pitch of the aircraft is doing something you're not telling it to do, you do runaway pitch trim checklist. Acting FAA Administrator Dan Elwell, a former airline pilot, told senators during a March 27 hearing on the MAX. In every plane I've ever flown, it's called a memory item. You're not fumbling through books. It's a time-critical procedure and you go to that. The European Aviation Safety Agency EASA, Executive Director Patrick Kentucky, speaking to European Parliament members March 19, said the procedure is not that complicated. But the fact that it was not followed by the Lion Air crew suggests they were confused. If they knew what was really happening, they would not have done what they did, and they would not have crashed. Among the questions investigators and U.S. lawmakers have was the crew's confusion a reflection of their training, the MCAS's shortcomings or some combination? Any pilot, whether we're talking about a small Piper Cub or a wide-body passenger aircraft, needs to be able to take manual control of their aircraft whenever necessary and fly it safely. Grov said. Advances in technology continue to make flying safer, but any pilot has to be trained to actually fly the plane they are flying, not just fly a computer. That is why we are asking the Inspector General to look at how automated systems in the cockpit are managed, the level of training that is provided to pilots outside the U.S., and international pilot training standards. FAA is working on guidance that stems from a 2013 working group report on flight path management system usage that includes 18 recommendations. 
much of the report's focus is on how automation is both helping and hindering pilots. The anticipated guidance is expected to address several recommendations, including one on creating policy that airlines can integrate seamlessly into their own operations. The policy should highlight and stress that the responsibility for flight path management remains with the pilots at all times, the report said. Focus the policy on flight path management, rather than automated systems. Note that this policy would contain what has previously been named an automation policy, and would be broader, to emphasize flight path management. The pilot training probe is one of several launched in the U.S. in the wake of the MAX crashes. Others are looking at FAA's certification standards and the MAX certification, in particular. Sean Broderick, Sean.Broderick at AviationWeek.com Ben Goldstein, Ben.Goldstein at AviationWeek.com